Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. You look wonderful in your blue jeans. I hope you are relaxed and happy and ready to celebrate Shabbat Shirah. And we are so blessed to have Ilana Arian with us. Shabbat Shalom. Let's sing together. We sing words from our Psalms, how good, how sweet it is to be together. Join us. Hine Matov. Hine Matov. Umanaim Shevelachim Kam Yachar Hinei Mato Umanaim Shevelachim Kam Yachar Hinei Mato Hinei Mato Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Many years ago, when I served a congregation in Livingston, New Jersey, anybody here from New Jersey? Great place to be from, don't you think? When we uh, were in New Jersey, we used to do a program with our students, our high school students, that we called a midnight run. And what we would do is for several weeks, we would collect food and toothbrushes and toothpaste and all of those little soaps that you steal from hotels and clothing. And we would organize it all and load everybody up in minivans and we would head into New York City. And we would go to a church that's just near Grand Central Station that was not an official homeless shelter, but was a place where many people who had nowhere to live could spend the night. The church would open up their basement to allow people some sense of refuge. And what we would do is we would show up pretty late at night, usually about quarter to 12, and we would have a sidewalk sale, and we would organize all of the clothes, the pants, the shirts, things. We had a lot of coffee that was donated by Starbucks and all kinds of different things that we would do. And the people who were spending the night in that church basement would come out onto the sidewalk to get a care package or to look for things they might need. In this week's Torah portion, after the Israelites are liberated and pass through that wall of water, and find their way to freedom in the wilderness, they got a long way to go. And they travel a little bit and they run out of food. And so when they run out of food, God decides to provide for them a special, holy, miraculous grain called manna. And when we think about what it means to take care of the poor, 
And when we think about what it takes to help people who need nourishment, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that needs nourishing? So if I'm hungry and I don't have enough food, I have to nourish my belly. But interestingly, God didn't provide storehouses of grain, of wheat or barley or normal foods of the earth. God provides manna, this miraculous, incredible food. And so when we consider, why is it that God decided to provide this miracle food as opposed to just a whole lot of regular food? I think it's because God knew something that we needed more than just to fill our bellies, but that we needed to nourish our souls, too. Rabbi Moshe Chaim Ephraim of Sudlikov, who wrote the great Hasidic work, the Dego Machane Ephraim, teaches that in Psalms 41, there is a passage that says, happy is the one who enlightens the poor. And what he teaches is that it's not enough to just feed the poor and clothe the poor. You have to help them cultivate their own sense of spiritual awareness. You have to help them continue to realize they're human. So the best part of the midnight run was not the clothing that we were able to give or the food we were able to distribute. It was the conversations these young people were able to have with these people whom everybody ignored all day long. That they were able to talk with them, to discuss with them, who are you? Where did you come from? How did you end up spending the night here in this church basement? What can I do to help you? Can I show you maybe this pair of pants will fit? To be treated like a human being, to help those people to see the fullness of their humanity. God realized that people needed spiritual nourishment. They needed awe. They needed wonder. They needed gratitude. They needed awareness. They needed to say those words they had spoken just a few days before, Mi chamocha ba'elim Adonai, who is like you, Adonai, with awe and wonderment and gratitude, and that we probably needed to do that at least twice a day so that we maintain not only our sense of physical health and satiation, but also to maintain and to care for our spiritual needs as well. Every time the Israelites put a spoonful of manna into their mouths, they realized the sheer fact of their life was in and of itself a holy and precious and wondrous gift. And perhaps we who are going to eat something a little less healthy than manna this evening will also be able to offer those prayers and those expressions of gratitude and thanks. Tonight we are absolutely blessed that we will have the music in the spirit of Ilana Arian, who will help to lead us in worship. And we're also very grateful that we have joining us uh, our guests from St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Seminary, who are sitting in the back. The reason they're sitting in the back is that um, their guides did not remind them it was Blue Jeans Shabbat. Um, and so they're the best dressed folks in our congregation, but we're grateful to welcome the students at the Catholic Seminary in Boynton Beach who are here with us tonight. And we wish everyone Shabbat Shalom. Please take a moment, turn to those who are seated near you, in front of you, behind you, next to you. Wish them Shabbat Shalom. If you don't know those people, make sure you introduce yourselves. And if someone is sitting alone, perhaps invite them to come and sit next to you. For those of you who are joining us online, at home, or wherever home is for you, we are so grateful that you are joining us for this evening's worship service. And we hope that we can hear your voices as resonant as we will hear those who are in the sanctuary with us. We begin this evening on page two with the kindling of the Shabbat candles. Candles will be kindled this evening by our bar mitzvah, Noah Benson and his parents, Jill and Todd. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all of those who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher 
Vishanu Bivitvota Vitivanu Lecha Ligner Lecha Ligner Shel Shabbat Amen. Continue on pages four and five with the celebration of the Kiddush. The Kiddush will be led this evening by Barbara Orville. The heaven and the earth were finished in all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that God had been doing, and God ceased on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because on it God ceased from all the work of creation that God had done. I don't know. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Purei Puri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kedushanu B'mitzvotav V'ratzavanu V'shabat Kodesho V'ahava U'vratzon Hin Kilanu Zikaron Lemase V'reshit Ki hu yom tehila lemikro e kodesh zecher letziat mitzrayim ki vanu vakarta veotanu kidashta mikohamim veshabat kochka. Ve'ahava uvratzon in kaltanu Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha-shavad L'chaim. Tonight, as we celebrate this Shabbat Shirah, the Shabbat of song and celebration, we remember that it wasn't just that first time when our people crossed the sea that they sing out in joy and in great celebration. Each Friday evening, as we gather, and tonight we gather in great numbers to welcome Shabbat, we add music to the service. We wouldn't say on a Wednesday or a Thursday when we have to get home for dinner. But on Friday nights, we welcome Shabbat with Kabbalah Shabbat, and we turn now to pages 20 and 21 in our prayer books. I invite everyone to rise as we welcome the Sabbath bride with the words of Lecha Dodi. <laughs> Shamor v'zachor b'dibur echad Hi hishmiyanu el ha'am yuchad Adonai echad u'shmo echad L'shem hul tiferet v'li t'hila L'echad odi L'echad odi L'ikrat kala b'nei Shabbat Tore di, tore di, chi va 
to welcome the Sabbath bride. on page 28 with the words of Baruch Hu.
Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hama'ariv, Aravim. Roll into dark, roll into light. Night becomes day, day turns to night. As Rabbi Levin mentioned at the beginning of the service, we have been asked by the rabbis of our tradition to reflect on the meaning of our redemption, of our going free from Egypt, not just on this Shabbat Shirah when we reread the telling of that story, but every morning and every evening as we say the words of Micha Mocha. And the words of Micha Mocha are not the only words we also say every morning and every evening. We are also invited to say the words of the Shema when we rise up, when we lay down, every morning and every evening. It's not that we forgot it from 10 minutes ago or an hour ago or from yesterday. It's that by inviting us to repeat these pieces of our tradition every single day, multiple times a day throughout our life, we are able to track how we have grown, how we have matured, how we enter into those words differently with each iteration. And so as we rise now for the words of the Shema, I invite you to think about how have you changed? How have you improved? How have you involved since the last time you said these words. Please rise. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Please be seated. We continue with words of Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol levavcha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol me'odecha v'hayu advarim ha'ele asher anochi metzavecha Shinantha <laughs> Uchtav tam amizuz zot betecha uvisharecha leman tiskeru vasitem et kol mitzvotai vihitem kedoshim leloechem ani Adonai eloechem. Asher hotzeit yatchem meyaret mitzrayim lihiot lachem lelohim ani Adonai Elohechem. This Shabbat we um, we read this miraculous story. Uh, one that's never occurred to me in my life, of running from slavery to freedom, encountering an ocean and seeing the seas split. 
And when I'm talking about this, this blessing often with, uh, with, with students, we talk about, you know, has that ever happened to you? It's such a dramatic visual. It's such a dramatic metaphor. It's such a dramatic moment in our story so that we notice how different it is from our everyday life, so that we think such a miracle could happen and that we are surrounded by miracles in our everyday life. And we know the sort of coda to the story, the reason that this Shabbat is called Shabbat Shira is that as the Israelites passed to the other side of the sea, we are told Miriam took out her timbrel, her tambourine, and everybody started to sing and dance. You know the song. And the women, right? So imagine being a slave, and you're running out of Egypt, right? Because the Pharaoh's going to change his mind. So grab whatever you can grab, and let's get out of here. And Miriam says, you know what I need? My timbrel. <laughs> There's beautiful Torah in imagining that what you need, what you might need as you begin on an arduous journey is something to help you celebrate. And Miriam had that knowing, she had that deep knowing. You never know when you might need to celebrate because the miracles are all around us. So as we, sp as we spend this Shabbat together, steeped in that miracle, that miracle of redemption from slavery to freedom, that miracle of bursting into song, that miracle of having just the right thing to help you celebrate, we embrace that Torah of, hmm, maybe I'll pack my timbrel just in case. <laughs> I'd love to teach you a new melody for Micha Mocha. like you Adonai Who is like you Adonai Yalla la la Yalla la 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 Yalla la 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 Yalla la 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 Try with us, Yalla la 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 la
sing words of Hashkivenu, we ask God for protection. We ask God to shelter us under a sukkat shalom, a sukkah of peace. You hear that word sukkah, sukkat shalom. And I've always been struck, it's not, we're not asking for a um, concrete building of peace. We're not asking for a skyscraper of peace. We're asking for the flimsiest structure we have, right? We know in our sukkah we're supposed to be able to feel the rain come down. We're supposed to be able to um, feel the wind and the elements. I built my first sukkah this year, and I can tell you, sometimes they fall over. That's how flimsy they are. And I think, I think we use this metaphor, a sukkah of peace, to remind ourselves with our open walls of the sukkah, the way that we get shelter is to shelter one another, that we can reach out through the wall of our sukkah and provide that shelter for those who need it. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Lishalom Vihamideinu Shomreinu Lechaim Lechaim Sing Hashkivenu Adonai Ashkivenu Adona Eloheinu Lishalom Eloheinu Lishalom Vehamideinu Vehamideinu Shomreinu Lechaim Lechaim Salenu Sukat Lomecha Vitak Nenu Beetsa Tova Milfanecha Veho Shienu Leman Shemecha Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Lashalom Eloheinu Lashalom Vehamideinu Shomreinu Lechaim Lechaim Ufros Alein Sukkat Shlomecha Vitzakneinu Be'etza Tova Milfanecha Vehoshienu Leman Shemecha Wolfson said that the three most important things in worship are music, music, music. So why not every Shabbat have a guest musician or have all the cantors here? Well, in Judaism, it can't all be intense all the time. There's this concept in Judaism called uh, pardes, and it's an acronym for four depths of understanding. Peshat, Remez, Drash, and Sod. Peshat is the most simple level. So some nights we have one cantor here, and it's lovely and wonderful. 
uh, remez is like a deeper hint. It's something more going on. And some nights we might have a musical theme, like perform all the music that Kanner, Michelle Austin, or Cohen has written. And drosh is like a deeper, longer, extended understanding of what is going on. And sowed is like a secret, deep meaning. And that's the way we can approach things. Sometimes with Shabbat, we just say, ah, oh, it's Friday afternoon. And that's the most of Shabbat. And sometimes we need to come to say, to say Kaddish for someone. There's a deeper tug, a pull of our heart. And sometimes there's something so spectacular happening up, happening up on the bima, a night like tonight where they can't even find enough seats in the synagogue, and a musical artist who some of us has known she's, she's a little girl, and some of us have only met for the first time tonight, the bima comes alive. And that's okay. Sometimes we can be in the Peshat place, the simple place. Sometimes we just need it easy and light. And sometimes we can find so deep, secret, buried, hinting, magical meaning in Shabbat. And that is the Vashamru that we continue with right now at this time on page 44 or up on the screen. Sometimes it's just, it's Friday night and we keep Shabbat. And sometimes it's as majestic as the moment in Torah when God created the world and then rested, like we do on Shabbat. We continue with Vishamru. Let's join together. Vishamru, Vinay Israel, Et Shabbat, Lasot, Et Shabbat, Et Orot Amberit continue with the tefillah. Say 
Please be seated. Do me a favor and turn to the prayer on page 62 in Mishkan to feel your prayer book if you have one, because I have a funny story about this prayer. We'll hear the Hebrew of it after silent prayer, but I have a funny story about the English. So if you've become B'nai Mitzvah at Temple Bethel, you know that we get to assign readings, right, to different people doing readings tomorrow. So years ago, this is probably 15 years ago, the weekend after uh, Bat Mitzvah, I get a call from a cousin during the week, and she goes, I'm really mad. And I said, why? And she's like, well, my cousin's family's bat mitzvah was this past weekend at your synagogue, and I think they assigned me this reading on purpose. I said, what reading did you have? So it's this reading on 62. My God, guard my speech from evil and my lips from deception. Before those who slander me, I will hold my tongue. I will practice humility. As for all who think evil of me, cancel their designs. And I said, Families get assigned this prayer every week. She goes, no, no, they hate me. They chose this especially for me. And I'm like, really? They didn't. But I thought at that moment, and I think again tonight, if we all treated the prayer this way, that we really believed that it was about us, that like we can do better, that maybe we need to complain a little net less and be nicer a little bit more and make our environment calmer and more beautiful and comfortable. And on this Shabbat Shirah, it's the, the Hebrew of this very prayer, may apply to you or not, you'll decide for yourself, but... It's the very Hebrew of this prayer that we sing on Shabbat Shirah. And perhaps it's a sign to us that just as easily as the Red Sea parts with God's hands with the miracle, we should, with the same blessed holiness and care, part our lips only when it is good, only have come out of our mouths things that are kind and caring and wonderful. And then, when we really think deeply about this prayer, we will do our best to make it be fulfilled. We continue in silent prayer, followed by the beautiful Elohai Nitzor, the Hebrew and the English, you will find on page 62.
Hello, hi, it's soil, it's on the mirror, house for time it up here, my mom. Willem Kalalan, I've sheet it, I'm been a sheet, I've fallen off to you. Hello, hi, hello, hi. Hello, hi, it's soil, it's on the mirror, house for time it up here, my mom. Willem Kalalan. Shabbat Shalom. <coughs> it's so <coughs> rare and beautiful to see such a full sanctuary. <coughs> I don't mean that about you. I just mean that about all of us. You know, it's, it's hard to find the time and it's hard to find the um, energy at the end of the week. And it just feels so nice to look out at all your faces and to hear you singing together. And I didn't want to let this moment pass without acknowledging that. Um, I wanted to spend a few minutes in a sort of moment of communal blessing together. Um, as a little bit of background, um, my wife Julia is a cantor, in, uh, we live in New York, and um, she, in addition to being a cantor, is a very avid uh, meditator and yoga practitioner and such things. Where I'm from, everyone's talking about mindfulness. Is that true here in Boca? A little bit of mindfulness in Boca? So I... Um, that's not easy for me, for my personality type, but for my spouse, it's very important. And, and at one point, she said to me a few years ago, gently, you know, Alana, maybe you could, you should think about, you know, finding some way to sit in silence. Like, it was kind of like a gentle, you know, <laughs> spousal request. And I was like, you know, okay, yeah, maybe. But of course, I didn't do anything like that. And then a few months later, she said it again. 
you know, maybe it might be good for you if you sit, you know. <laughs> so as those of you who are married know, you know, it's a good idea. If your spouse says that, something like that twice, gently, the same exact thing again, I was like, all right, fine, I get it. So I embarked for a couple years trying to find a version of mindfulness that worked for me. And as a sort of naturally high-strung New York Jew, mom of two, et cetera, pre-pandemic this is even, um, I, I really found it so difficult. And I mostly tried things and, and you know, struggled and kind of put them down. But I did find one uh, practice that has really spoken to me and I continue to use it even, you know, every day. And I did it in the airport today, just for you to know. <laughs> um, the, the kind of meditation is called uh, loving kindness meditation, or meta. I see some nodding heads. Um, I'll give you the Cliff's Notes version, which is uh, in, in loving kindness meditation, instead of, um, let's say, focusing on your breath or focusing on a word, a mantra, or a particular visualization, in loving kindness meditation, the idea is you come up with a series of phrases. Um, they can be anything, but they, it tends to be something like, um, may I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy. And you sort of come up with those phrases, they're really blessings, as you can hear, um, and you say them in your mind over and over. And you first, de you first direct them at yourself, may I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy, and you think about that for a while. And then at a certain point, the teacher that I listen to has you picture a, uh, someone who's a source of good in your life, someone who you love, and you picture them, and then you direct the same phrases in your mind to them. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. And then you know the one that's coming next. You have to picture somebody who's not a source of good in your life. Someone who really is hard for you. And you picture them. And then you bless them. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. It's very simple and it's very difficult. And I can tell you that um, as a sort of aggressively resistant to <laughs> mindfulness type of personality, I've had the experience over the years of running into someone who's difficult for me that I've been like secretly blessing behind their back for a year or whatever. <coughs> you know, it helps. I mean, it doesn't solve everything, but you know, I'm just a little softer around the edges. Um, anyway, over this last two years as I've been doing this, um, little practice, I notice a parallel with what we're taught is the oldest blessing in our tradition, Birkat Kohanim, um, the priestly benediction, uh, may God bless you and keep you. You hear this blessing <coughs> in all of the peak life cycle moments in a Jewish life. Um, I'm sure Noah and your family, you'll hear it tomorrow at a bar mitzvah. You hear it under the chuppah, you hear it uh, with a, um, a new a Jew joining the covenant. Uh, you hear it um, at a baby naming or a bris. And um, when the, the rabbi is holding the baby up at the baby naming like um, Simba, you know, from the Lion King. <laughs> and, th and the rabbi says, um, may God bless you and keep you. We have a line. The whole community has a line. We have a part in the script. The rabbi says the blessing, and we say, Ken yehi ratzon. Can you say that? Ken yehi ratzon. May it be so. It's such a beautiful innovation of Judaism that in these peak moments, it's not just a regular old uh, prayer or blessing that somebody can say on their own. You actually need a community around you to make the blessing sacred because we know that we have a part. Um, and I started to notice the parallel between those two things, this practice of may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you be happy, and this, this formulation of may God bless you and keep you, may God be kind to you, may God give you peace. And so I, I want to uh, invite you for the next few minutes to, to do this practice together with me um, I never know what to call it. It's not just, it's not quite a song. It's not exactly a prayer. It's not quite a meditation. It's like, um, a thing that I'd like to do together. <laughs> um, and I want to teach you the part that we'll sing together. It goes like this. Can you hear a tone? Can you hear a tone? Try with me. Can you hear a tone? 
Can you hear that song? Wow, do you hear how great you sound? It's quite powerful. The next part goes, may I find my way back home? May I find my way back home? Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? And we end like this, may I find my way back home. Let's do that all together. May I find my way back home. This is the part where I'm going to close my eyes because it makes it easier for me to get in the zone and it makes me more comfortable. So that's what I'm going to do. And I invite you, if it makes you more comfortable, to close your eyes too. If it makes you less comfortable to have your eyes closed, don't do that at all. Do something else that makes you feel more comfortable. We begin with ourselves. We are all in need of love. We are all deserving of wholeness. We are all deserving of holding. We are all deserving of the miracles that surround us each day. The splitting of seas, waking up in the morning. We open up our hearts and we offer ourselves this blessing. May I be safe. May I be free. May I find a space, space to just be. We sing, can you hear that song? Can you hear a song? Can you hear a song? May I find my way? May I find my way back home? Can you hear a song? Can you hear a song? May I find my way back home? And we call to mind someone who is good to us, a source of joy in our lives, someone who really knows us, someone who really sees us, they see all of it and they love us anyway, someone whose face makes us smile, someone who holds us up, Someone who makes us feel braver than we are on our own. A source of love and goodness in your life. <clears throat> we open up our hearts and we offer them this blessing. May you be safe. May you be safe. May you be free, may you find space, may you find space, space to just be, space to just be. Can you hear a tone? Can you hear a tone? Can you hear a tone? May you find your way back home. Can you hear a song? Can you hear a song? May you find your way back home. And we call to mind someone who is difficult for us, someone who is a challenge, Someone who we don't understand. 
Even though we try, even though we've tried, and we've tried, and we've tried again and again and again and again. They don't understand us. We don't understand them. Someone who causes us pain. Someone who causes us confusion. Someone who makes you feel small. We open up our hearts and we try to offer them uh, this blessing. May you be safe. May you be safe. May you be free. May you be free. May you find space. May you find space. Space to just be. Can you hear our tone? Can you hear our tone? Can you hear our tone? May you find your way back home. Can you hear our tone? Can you hear our tone? May you find your way back home. And we call to mind all that is good here. The sound of this beautiful community filling the walls with song on Shabbat Shira. So many people, they had to set up so many extra chairs. I've never seen something like that in my life in a synagogue. It's incredible. What it says about this community showing up, putting on your blue jeans and singing. It's incredible. Spending this Shabbat in this room, focusing on miracles, acknowledging our gratitude in every day. Good people who show up, good people who say yes. All the good that we do. When we raise our voices together in song. open up our hearts and we offer ourselves this blessing may we be safe may we be free may we be free may we find space may we find space space to just be can you hear our tone? Can you hear our tone? Can you hear our tone? May we find our way back home. Can you hear our tone? Can you hear our tone? May we find our way back home. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Alana, for enriching your spirit and enriching our home. It's my privilege to welcome up at this precious moment Amy Berger and J.C. Lingelbach, who are getting married tomorrow. Brahim Havahim, Brahim Havahim, Bishem Adonai, Berach Nuchem, Berach Nuchem, Mi Beit Amen. 
Amy and JC, it is wonderful to welcome you back home. For Amy, this has been your home since the very first hours of your being. And it is in the embrace of this congregation and community and our neighborhood that you have found your way through your religious education on this bima you celebrated bat mitzvah confirmation and have found your way into such a beautiful adulthood. And that has led you to JC, with whom you will be establishing your home. In a few hours, you will stand with me beneath the chuppah, which is a symbol of the home that you will create together. And we pray that in all of the different ways that Ilana invited us to welcome ourselves home, that you will always welcome each other home. And that you will build a home that is filled with safety, security, love, and honesty, a place in which you will find inspiration and comfort and renewal and love. And we pray that not only will your home be open to your community as is symbolized by that open canopy under which you will stand, but that you will always know that this community should always be a home to which you will always return. And so if we can say together with you, and I invite, there's a whole bunch of canters. May God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and be good to you. May God's life forever shine between you and upon you and in the home you create together as you go forth to a life filled with blessing and holiness, goodness and peace. And we say together, Amen. And for a little practice, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> We rise as the ark is opened. In front of this open ark, we now ask the Holy One to bless all of those in need of healing of body, of mind, and of spirit. We pray that the voices of all and the song of prayer bring comfort and wholeness to all those in pain. Tonight we are thinking of Meredith Abramson, Jim Alexander, Daniel Ballin, Fred Belkin, Nikki Benhamo, Beverly Berger, Sandy Berman, Margie Berman Block, Jenna Lynn Blackman, Kathleen Bowersox, Mark Bromson, Ed Burns, Andrea Colton, Chloe Thomas, Chana Simcha Bat Moshe Yechili Veharav Kayla Bracha, Chaya Esther Tahila Bas Ariel Sipora, Michael Costin, Shelley Darman, Evan Dash, Rhonda Finlay, Daniel Franks, Marty Fromowitz, Harry A. Gaines, David Gerber, Larry Guys, Ross Goldstein, Josh Gully, Myra Hal, Bonnie Hirsch, Marsha Hoffman, Keith Homer, Olivia Jones, Jack Kalmanson, Honey Canoff, Ken Canoff, Judd Carnillo, Marilyn Cass, Gary Nepler, Murray Koppelman, Ethan Kotler, Barry Leeper, Susan Myers, Mordechai Ben Sarafaga, Linda Nagler, Claudia Plasky, Linda K. Pruitt, Bruce Rains, Jackie Robinson, Melissa Rose, Eileen Rosenbaum, Alan Rosenfeld, Abby Schein, Kenneth Shore, Hannah Siegel, Samuel Weinberg, Joan Weidenfeld, Tom Weidenfeld, Lynn Winters, Paul Yentis, Lo Zilberberg, and to all of those names, we had those in your hearts that you are thinking of this Shabbat, whether you're in the Singer Sanctuary with us or with us on Zoom.
Baruch Tadonai Rofeha Cholim. Blessed are you, God, who heals the sick. Mi standing and turn to page 282 for Alenu. Alenu seated. It is now my pleasure to invite up Wendy Whalen, our synagogue's president of the Board of Trustees, to offer us some announcements. Shabbat Shalom. I would first like to give a special thank you to our rabbis and cantors and of course to our guest Ilana Arian for leading us in the most beautiful Shabbat Shira service tonight. Um, also, to Noah on your bar mitzvah tomorrow, mazel tov to you and thank you to you and your parents, Jill and Todd, for leading us in blessings over candles, and to Barbara Orville for leading us in the Kiddush tonight, um, mazel tov to Amy and JC on your upcoming wedding tomorrow, and a special guest in the back, um, St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Seminary, we welcome you. And also a very special thank you tonight to Joanne and Philip Procacci for sponsoring this weekend with Alana Arian. Tomorrow morning, you can join our artist in residence, Alana Arian, along with Cantor Lori Brock and cantorial soloist Jake Harris for a wonderful musical Shabbat morning service to stand at the shores of the sea, as did the Israelites in this week's Torah portion, and contemplate the ideal of redemption tomorrow. This will be at 1045 here at the Schaefer Family Campus. You can then join us for the first part of a restorative weekend with Cantor Elizabeth Shamash, that will be on Friday, February 17th at 7.30 in the evening, where she will lead services. You can enjoy beautiful melodies, meditations, and chants to help release the stressors of the week and enter Shabbat with an open heart. Cantor Shamash continues the next day, Saturday, February 18th at 10 in the morning for Shabbat worship and Torah study. We hope you can start coming at 9.30 to join us for bagels and schmooze. She will then continue with other programs that will focus on self-care and spiritual awareness, 
You can visit our website, tbeboca.org, for more information. Temple Bethel is pleased to offer countering active threat training. It is unfortunate that we need to do this, but I think everybody knows that it's very important. This is going to be a comprehensive program, which is developed specifically for houses of worship on Thursday, February 23rd at 7 in the evening. The training is free, and registration is required on our website. Registration is also open for the Bethel Bash on Saturday, April 1st at 7 p.m. here at the Schaefer Family Campus. It's going to be a great evening, and we hope you'll join us. We also hope that you'll stay after services tonight for the own egg and to schmooze, and a very special thank you to Deborah and Jack Ber Berger, who are sponsoring the Onig tonight in honor of the upcoming wedding of their daughter, Amy, to JC. As you make your way out of the sanctuary tonight and you head towards the Welcome Center, please stop by the Sadaka box. Consider making a contribution to our Sadaka fund. Tonight's funds will be going to Habitat for Humanity of South Palm Beach County. And please note, this is new. Starting tonight, you can make a donation on our website at tbeboca.org slash giving slash sadaka. And for those who are here in person tonight, there is, for the first time, a QR code at the sadaka box to make your donating even easier. <laughs> so you can visit our website for information about these and so many other wonderful events here at Temple Beth El. Shabbat Shalom. Our thoughts now turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. As I read the names of those we are remembering this Shabbat, I invite you to rise as your loved one's name is read. This Shabbat, we are remembering Lawrence Edelman, Louis Adler, Susanna M. Einstein, Janet Maxine Asher Flood, Evelyn Averick, Irving Bankowski, Shirley Bankowski, Gerald Simon Barron, Bertha Barron, Mary Bartell, Theodora Bautista, Samuel Becker, Anna Becker, Dora Berg, Shirley Berger, Leona Channon, Fred Cohan, Raymond Milton Cooper, Cecilia Crow, Leon Deitch, Irving Dicker, Maria De Pietro, Paul Donoff, Herman Edis, Harry Ellenson, Frida Epstein, Marcy Klein Esses, Stephen Feller, Anne Fine, George Fish, Sylvia Fulbaum, Jack Frank, Walter Frank, Daniel E. Franklin, Julius I. Freed, Harry Gerber, Ruth Gerber, Louis Glauberg, Ethel Goldblatt, Irvin Golden, Gertrude Goldstein, Arnold Goldstone, Samuel Goodman, Mark David Gordon, Pearl Granite, Jack Greenberg, Benjamin R. Gutterman, Stuart Gutterman, Florence Harris, Robert Harrow, Herman Hurst, Edna H. Heiger, Frederick Hyman, Rochelle Shelley Heimowitz, Robert Jacobson, Alexander Calmore, Michael Perry Kaplan, Sidney L. Karp, Henry Kaufman, Stanley Gordon Kay, Mickey Kipple, Sarah Klammer, Philip Colstein, Eva Crosser, Alexander Langsam, Harry Lichter, Fanny Lieberman, Louis Liebman, Stanley Mallon, Gwen Meltzer, Carl Myers, Julius Miller, Alan Miller, Theodore Millen, Bernard Mirochin, Michael Nash, Leslie Lean Needleman, Ida Newman, Maxwell Passerman, Rose P Procassi, Meyer Rakus, Herbert G. Ratner, William Ryshevsky, Betty Robinson, Joseph David Rosen, Marilyn Ross, Daniel Gedalia Rubin, Phyllis Rubin, Cecilia Sadiger, Beatrice Saffer, Miriam Savin, Pearl Schaefer, Helen Schnee, Paul Schoenberger, Jane Schwab, Paul Sherman, David Sherman, Gertrude Slavin, Irving Smith, Maxwell Summers, Shirley Sparks, 
Dorothy Spiro, Herb Stone, Joel Tabnick, Douglas Tamarkin, Morris Tucker, Sandra P. Waldman, Harry Warheit, Jay Wasserman, Herman Weinberg, Molly Weinberg, Florence Weingart, Melvin I. Weiss, Julia Werner, and Fanny Woolman. And we also remember with sadness those we've lost in the last 30 days. Helene Kirshner, Jack Wolf, Nicholas James Gentile, Theodore Ted Davis, Carol w Wolf Ellis, Beth Ann Baskies, Louis Green, Hillary Gottlieb, Honey Feinstein, Henrietta Oppenheim Matz, Sylvia Cristol, Robert Levy, Gladys Carolyn Rothbaum, Howard Wexler, Daniel Schack, Judith Rips, Eileen Press, and Elaine Tall. And we add all of the names of those you are remembering this Shabbat as well. We rise as a community for Kaddish, which can be found on page 294. It gadal vi it kadash shimei rabba, be'al ma di bra chirute vi amlich malchute, be'chayechon uv yomechon uv chaye de chol beit Yisrael, ba'agala uv izman kari vi imru amen, yehe shimei rabba mevorach leolam lomeo mayach, it barach vi shtabach vi paar vi tromam vi nase. Vita dar vita le vita lal shame de kudasha brihu. Le ela min ko birha tava shirata. Tushbeha tava nechamata. Dami ran bealma vi imru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya. Behaim alenu veal ko yisrael vi imru amen. O se shalom bim romav. Hu ya a se shalom. Alenu veal ko yisrael vi imru amen. May the Holy One of blessings and peace to all of us, to all of Israel and all who inhabit the earth, to which we say, Amen. 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 Try it. Wrap us in perfect peace. Guide our steps steadily forward as we go on our way. Bless us with compassion as we walk new paths ahead. Bless us with strength for the journey and we say amen.
Thank you so much, Ilana, for leading us in a beautiful service. We'd like to enjoy, invite our children up and Noah to lead us in Mozi. Thank you to our musicians, to Vindia and to Jeff and to Ricardo, and in the booth to Ray and Ron and Hunter and Kira. Come on up, kids. Let's all join together in the words of Mozi. Ready? Come on. Ha Mozi We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, ha-mosilechem miharetz, amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, say Shalom. Israel. 